happy you're here. Today we are going to make luscious and creamy dairy-free mashed potatoes. When you're dairy-free, you probably don't think about things like mashed potatoes as something you can't have anymore. Or you could have them, you can surely mash some potatoes, but they're not going to be the mashed potatoes you used to love before you had to go dairy-free. They're not going to be buttery and creamy and delicious. But I'm going to show you how to do that. And I've got a few special ingredients and techniques so that you can enjoy creamy, delicious mashed potatoes again. So we're gonna jump right in, and before you even think about peeling your potatoes or slicing them or boiling them, we've got to get the sauce started. So this is my answer to the lack of creaminess um, without dairy. So the main ingredient is a plant-based dairy-free cream, which I've chosen Ripple. I find that it is the, the best I've, I've found yet. But the problem with all this, this is a half and half actually, the problem with almost all of the plant-based half and halves or heavy creams is even if they're not, they're unsweetened, they still have a sweetness to them. And that sweetness does not do well in savory dishes. So what I have is a, I've devised a system to basically kind of get rid of the sweetness, but keep the creaminess and the depth of flavor. So I have the ripple and I'm going to put it in a saucepan. And so I'm also adding some chicken stock. So that's going to help take away some of that sweetness and add a nice savory base. And then I have Earth Balance uh, Buttery Spread. Um, that's going to bring the buttery flavor. And I'm going to add three cloves or two or three cloves, depending on what size they are, of garlic. But I'm, I didn't mince them. They're just kind of crushed a little bit. Because what I want them to do is just steep in this as we simmer this on the stove and let these flavors combine. And then when we get to the actual mashing part, you'll see where this comes in. So I'm gonna go get this on the stove and let it simmer for the entire time that we're cutting, peeling, cutting, and boiling our potatoes so it really has some time for all the flavors to melt. Okay, so I washed and scrubbed the potatoes, peeled the potatoes, and then rewashed the potatoes because you know once you peel them, you get all that gritty stuff. And then I cut them into about one and a half to two inch uh, pieces. The reason we cut them smaller is one, they will cook evenly. And two, we're going to be using a potato or a ricer, a ricer, to rice our potatoes for the mashed potatoes. And it's going to, you'll see later when we get to that, it's going to be easier to put the smaller pieces of potato into the ricer than it would be to have like half a potato or even a quarter of a potato. I put water into the pan about two inches above the level of the potatoes and I've got it, I'm going to turn it on high and bring this to a boil. It's really important because these potatoes are very small that you watch this, this process. Don't put it on, go do something and come back because then you may overcook them. It's going to take me a little while longer to get to a boil because I'm not putting the lid on, but when I, it's just a thing when I do potatoes, I like to see them the whole time. I don't like them out of my sight. One of the, um, a very important thing is to add some salt to the water. And so it's a healthy amount of salt. That's probably about a tablespoon. I'm going to go a little bit more. Potatoes are the kind of food that really needs salt. But potatoes, pasta, things like that. So you definitely want to get this seasoned. So I am going to patiently wait for these to boil. And then when they get close, I'm going to use my slotted spoon here to pick one out, what, pick one out and cool it off and, t and taste test it. That's how I'm going to know when they're done because I have a certain point. I want them to be you know, soft, but still have a little bit of a push to it and, and not too gummy and not too starchy. Okay, so I've drained the potatoes and I've added them to their separate bowl. And now the fun will begin. We are going to rice the potatoes. If you've never used a ricer, um, it is a great way to get very, very smooth and creamy potatoes. Of course, you could use a potato masher. This whole recipe works exactly as, as the recipe calls for with a potato masher or a ricer. I just like to use the ricer. So I'm taking a spoonful or a couple spoonfuls of potato, putting them in my ricer. And then there we go. This is a bit hard on the hands, but it's totally worth it. And at this, at this point, now that I've got a few potatoes in there, I am going to start incorporating the sauce that has been simmering for quite some time. I'm using a ladle. You want this sauce. It's been on the stove, so of course it's going to be warm. But anytime you make mashed potatoes, if you add butter, milk, uh, stock, whatever you add to it, it should go in warm. It should never go in cold. Okay, I'm going to mix this around just so we can start incorporating that. And back to potato rising.
all the potatoes have been riced and I've been, I've been adding as I go along uh, the sauce. And remember, there's, there's a few cloves of garlic in here and I found, I found them and I pulled them out because we don't want the whole garlic in the mashed potatoes. That, that, would, that wouldn't taste bad at all, but we don't want that. Okay, I'm probably gonna end up using all of this. So I'm mixing it up. Oh, these are looking really good and creamy. So you can choose to use all of the sauce or some of the sauce, depends on how dry or how creamy you would like your potatoes. I am gonna probably end up using all of the sauce because there's not much left. There's that last garlic clove there. Okay, I'm gonna mix this. Whoops. Oh, look how creamy they look. It's tasting time. Let's see what this tastes like. Oh, oh my God, so, so, so creamy. Luscious and creamy, that's what they are. Now the, the ripple, and when you try ripple, if you haven't already, it's got this underlying sweetness, almost coconutty, and I'm very sensitive to coconut. I've gotten rid of 98.7 of that. I can taste it just a little bit, but I think I'm being a little sensitive too. Okay, now that I've tasted it, I think I wanna add just a little bit of salt, and I definitely wanna add a lot of fresh cracked ground pepper here. Okay, let's mix that up, give it another taste. Oh, these are gonna be delicious. Oh, oh my goodness, they're so good. <laughs> I don't need gravy, I don't need anything, just put this in front of me, I will eat it all. Oh my God, these are so delicious. One more bite. I just can't help myself. You know, this would go really, really well with meatloaf. Oh, yeah, we're doing a meatloaf video. And if we've done it already, <clears throat> it's up here. We're actually releasing it in three days. So, but whenever you watch this video, it's pro the link is probably up here. And with the meatloaf, I think green bean bundles would go really well too. And, and we have that video up here, go check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you make this recipe and you enjoy dairy-free, luscious and creamy mashed potatoes once again. And if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead, do that. Hit the notifications. We have new cooking videos every Wednesday and Sunday and you will get notified as soon as they come out. And until next time, happy eating.